Hello, this is Old Electronics Fan, and this is my Pioneer RA6600. And I, I started uh, to work on this because the controls were a bit noisy, and uh, even the tuner seemed a bit scratchy. And I didn't bother taping any of that because, well, I mean, who cares? I mean, that's not exactly exciting stuff. Um, but other things happened uh, while I was in there working on it, and I thought it might be interesting uh, I get into uh, the A-Track and some other things. Um, but I'm going to start by, by, for those who may not be familiar with why your tuner can become scratchy, I'll start by looking at that. Now this, because I thought about this, I knew what was wrong, and I thought, well, it might be good to... Uh, show people what what they're dealing with if they encounter a noisy tuner. And what it boils down to is, I don't know, there are, I'm pointing to one of the little ground tabs that rides against the shaft. So you've got a ground tab here, um, looks like there's one there, there's one there, and I think I see one over here. I didn't shoot anything, although there might be one on the edge here. And if it were still noisy when I tested it, uh, I would have gone after that one. Um, but that's not the real problem. You notice I have this speaker back here hooked up. And the other speaker that I'm actually using is there. I had another one up there. I thought my speaker had gone south, although it didn't sound right. It sounded to me like there's something wrong with the connection in the stereo. In fact, let's see if I can see if it's still doing it. Um, You're listening to everything no, of course country. you're not. Froggy 100.3, live online, connected by Waylon Chevrolet, located on Main Street in beautiful... Well, basically, it sounded... And of course, it's not going to do it now. Basically, it sounded like somebody was gargling... Uh, really distorted, really nasty, and I thought, well, what the heck? So, I put this in there because I want to show you the problem, and it's not necessarily easy to see because um, I don't know if you can see. I'm going to try to see if we can get in there close enough. I don't know if it's going to let me get in close enough so you can see. Um, and that just washes it out. Um, I don't know. Can you? I'm not even sure you can see that. I, um, I used a magnifying glass. Oh yeah, you can see one. Right there in the middle, you can see the line running around, the, and it's the one, middle to the right, that one. And you can see it sort of on the one above. Well, most of these pins look like that. The minute I moved that heat sink for the stereo amp, uh, you probably noticed that that's a... Um, so what I'm going to have to do is resolder all these. Of course, what's really annoying about these kinds of problems is um, the fact that they're intermittent. As you saw, I couldn't make it happen, unfortunately. And um, and the um, so I, it was just it was just distorting and. Uh, Nope. Let's see, can I make it do it? There it is. There it is. And that, my friends, is the problem. Um, and all I had to do was push on one of those pins, and immediately we had troubles. That also tells me that I can test this when I'm done doing my repair. Which is a good thing, because 
I want to know that it's fixed. Now I was getting this ready to sell. Um, at some point I, I, I wanted to uh, part with this and uh, maybe get something else. Um, this was this was a uh, my, my primary stereo for a while uh, because my other one had a bad on off switch. In fact, when I finally got into that one and started uh, okay, and started um, exploring what was wrong, I found out that the contacts got welded. I don't, I don't know if you can see that in the camera. I mean, it's almost yeah, maybe not. I can actually see the line running all the way around the pin on these, on this one, a number of them. There's a whole bunch of them where they just, they've all broken loose. So, let's see where we get here. Oops. Yeah, there's very little solder around the base of these pins. Some of them, the minute I touch them, it just winds up with a nice big hole alongside the pin because there's just nothing there. And you get out of my way. It was kind of funny. I was just playing the radio, and and then the other thing I'm doing, I'm dealing with, is uh, I put those old Scott speakers up there because I wanted to use those because the um, speakers I was using before just re really needed more of more oomph uh, to drive them, and a lot of the stuff I work on is lower. Watch. And um, but I, just, I realized that uh, one of the two speakers was not uh, cooperating, and um, so I was I, I dragged this out and I was testing and comparing. And I pulled the speakers down. And I found out that speed the sub the woofer in one of them was an eight ohm and then the other one is an eight ohm speaker or six ohm rather a six ohm speaker and um which explains why one of them puts out more volume for the same amount of volume control setting compared to the other all right so let's see here um um so I unplug this let's try let's see if we got anything here. Let's see, let's try a station that's got some talking on it, maybe that will be, allow me to play more. <laughs> USA Radio News with Tim Berg. Capitol is on lockdown as thousands of supporters of President Trump are protesting on the steps of Congress. The Cannon House office. One of the problems with the local station is that it's always got this nasty hum in it, which is annoying. So I think that solves the problem. 
So, bad solder joints. Because right now, I'm looking to see if there are any others that I might want to reduce and send down here, or in here. And, uh, I have a hot soldering iron that I could put to use. Alright, you can shut up. But, I've been, I use this for a couple of years anyway, as my main stereo. And then I repaired the other one that I really wanted to use, and, um, and set this aside after going through it and cleaning the controls, and that was maybe a year or so ago. And I dragged it back out, and the, um, the reason I dragged it out was to play with these speakers, and I wanted to um, check out one of the cassette decks that I had. So, when I cleaned this, the controls in this before, I used the Radio Shack cleaner, which I've been using for years, and I'm used I'm used to, uh, or I'm, yeah, I'm used to, and I forgot to zoom out, okay, so I was, I'm talking to you, and you, I guess it doesn't really matter, because all I was just doing was poking around with my flashlight to see if there are any others, all right, so anyway, um, a lot of people are familiar with the Oxit, I started using it more, um, because um, there have been occasions when I've cleaned controls, and they didn't clean, and then I drag out the deoxit and all of a sudden, the controls would wor start working. So, um, so this time when I cleaned this, I did use the deoxid on the controls, hoping it would last more than a year. Um, of course, this has been sitting for all that time. I don't know. But in any case, the controls on this were not happy. And like I said, I used this for several years, and, and I did notice that some of the controls were a little bit sketchy. And like I said, when I put, pulled this out of service, I went through it. Uh, so I was rather shocked, number one, to find the controls noisy again. And number two, I was really shocked when it decided to start gar gargling at me. Um, <laughs> which is, you know, not what you want to hear from your stereo. Um, so, let's see. Some of those businesses are W... I'm just looking to see. We don't have good reception here, unfortunately. It seems like everything's good. Oh, I went after a talk station because I didn't really want to run this any length of time uh, on something that wasn't uh, music. Because if we get nailed. But let's see what FM has. I'm just checking to make sure. Start because someone hasn't eaten yet. When we're talking about the definition of hangry, you got it right there. 80% of arguments start because someone hasn't eaten yet. So grab oh, wow. Snickers. Eat before you fight, or or maybe eat and don't fight, I guess. Interesting, if you heard what that guy was just saying. Yeah, there's nothing. So anyway, so I believe that fixes it. Um, oh, I, while I'm thinking about it, I don't know how good this is, because that was the other thing. I was going to look at And of course, I don't have anything that, uh, let's see here. Uh, so we want, so I want tape. Okay, there we go. So that's still not, that's, well, when you're talking A-tracks, there's nothing new. Let's see if this is, this is a commercial tape. Let's see. Oh, uh, this needs to be aligned. The drapes and tiffins and the trees. Well, that tape seems to be working better. Jingle bells. I've seen pictures of flowers. Yeah, you can hear, um... You can hear, um... Two tracks on track one. And I don't think that's easy to get to to align. Okay, I put out this short video just to um, show somebody what they might be dealing with when their stereo starts doing the 
distorted gargling sound. Um, this is an older, this has a, it's an amplifier chip, an STK040, which I guess is probably fairly common. And I guess I also, they've also, um, also know that some of those will go bad, which I was really hoping this one hadn't. Uh, and I found out very quickly by just moving the heat sink that, uh, yeah, that wasn't the problem with this. It was uh, the solder joints when I actually went and looked. So, so just a, a little edu quick educational thing um, to help people when they encounter this kind of a problem. Uh, well, this is interesting. Okay, so I started looking into this, and I found something I didn't wasn't really happy about. You see the playhead and you see the plastic bracket that goes around it. Well, there's not supposed to be a break on the right hand side there. Um, I'm trying to see if I can get a flashlight more on that side. Uh, this is tricky. Well, anyway, that, that white plastic bracket should be complete all the way around and you can see the broken pieces on the right hand side there so the plastic is aged and split and I have no idea what I could possibly do to fix that and I gotta tell you that's not easy to get to um, okay this all of this oops, all of this has to do with the uh, eight track all the controls that run it all the controls here that run it um, get lighting it's a busy little board Oops, I keep forgetting where I am that is a busy little board all these connections hmm yeah Now it looks like they've got stuff that would allow me to take this off, but it doesn't look easy. Um, hmm. Interesting. Let's see. I'm trying to... Yeah. This is not... This is not going to be easy. I'm looking to see what i got to do. Because the part that I want to get to is right about there, somewhere in that area, under this board. So, well, uh -huh, uh -huh. probably means I have to take this off and unhook all the connections. Maybe I, if I get... Um, this uses, if they aren't so um, um, hard that they can't use them. These are look like they're designed to be removed and then reused. So I've got more, more of these. But that should make them really easy to take off. Um, well, anyway, I'll have to look in that into this and see what I can see. Okay. Um, well, I got into this um, because of this, well, this. Um, and after I pulled it apart, I thought, did, we, did I really want to do this? Did I really want to get into this? And maybe knowing what I now know, maybe I wouldn't have gotten into it. But this plastic piece here went on top of these two arms. And because there's epoxy in the way, it can't go there. Now, I've tried... A variety of things to fix this. Now, this is nylon. There's no way you're going to glue this to this and have it stay. On top of which, I don't know how clear that is, but there's actually a split starting in there and there. It's actually you can actually see that on the top this the plastic has stretched. Um, there's a little stretch mark there as it kind of a V shape here as the plastic is starting to bend and break, and if I probably put enough pressure on it, it probably would just break. So, that was a problem too. So, 
I said, well, what am I going to do with this? I, I, at one point I said, well, the heck with it. I'm not going to fix it. It's going to live without an 8-track. And then I thought, huh, I've got this piece of brass uh, I stole out of a, a dead um, uh, multi-socket thing for the wall. And so I thought, well, I'll put that on. So I actually, I actually got this on. Put the screw hole, screw up through there, and um, through the hole, and it worked out great. And I had these little ears that would lock into the back of this. I said, "Good, I'm all set." And then I put it in place, and there's no clearance. There's no clearance on this side of the head for something like that. So I pondered that for a while, and then I came to try to come up with another metal bracket uh, uh, um, similar to this, but with a, a rounded end that was sticking out. And um, that was being interfered with by stuff that sits behind behind this, so that didn't work. So I finally came up with this, um, and I was really happy with myself. I, I pulled this off, and I got it on here, and I actually got it to hold the head in place. Got got it to hold the head in place, um, and assembled it, and the static and noise. This seemed to be causing was just you couldn't listen to the tape because it was just way too noisy. So here I am. I think this is try number four. Um, so I said, well, I know I can't glue it together with epoxy with any hope of that plastic piece staying on top, but I know the the, the epoxy will cling to the metal. So here's what I did. There's three there's three faces that touch the uh, tape head, and so what I did is I took my soldering iron and went inside the faces and I caught grooves here, here, and here inside. Coated it with epoxy, put epoxy on this, put it into place, and then held it against. There's a there's a stop here and a stop here, and another one on the bottom that align the head. <coughs> Thankfully those are there, because I'd have real trouble. So I held it till it stayed tight, and then I let it sit. <clears throat> of course, in the middle of all of this, because <clears throat> you're moving things around, and I put this tape on here because these cords moving individually were causing the wires to break here. In fact, there's two wires um, that I had to repair. Um, got this one. Where am I? Got this one, and then there's one down underneath it that broke. Um, and I had to get to this one. I had to dig out my needle-pointed weller soldering iron, a little 15 watt. But that got me in there, and so and then I went and checked the wires at the ends to make sure that the um, connection was good. So then, once this was anchored, oh, I can't seem to stay in camera, can I? All right. So once this was anchored, I'm sure, and I'm sure this was in there solidly. Uh, then I decided to um, deal with this because when I first when I first looked at this from outside, I thought, oh, this is the adjustment screw. Well, no, it's not. This screw clamps this head into place, and also it clamps on this piece, which is a ground plate. Which is a ground plate. Let's see if I can stay somewhere in the middle of this frame here. The screw was, was putting pressure against this ground plate so that this and this were grounded. So I put a clamp on this to hold this in place, and I put epoxy on either end of this and let that harden up. And then once everything was hardened up as well as I as I uh, well enough that I thought I could then work with it, I tested to make sure. In fact, I'm going to do that again. Put this on noisemaker, and uh, whoops, we're going to check. All right, please be grounded, and it is. So I've got the ground, which is essential. And what's what's the? Uh, when I was checking this out, I discovered something, and it kind of makes sense to me. This ground wire only goes to one of these wires. There aren't other wires that are connected to it. 
if you go down here at the other end and you check here where because the black this, the, these black wires are, are grounds and there's, they're here as well only one of these have a connection to this and that kind of makes sense because you need a ground from here back to the amp but if you ran a ground all the way back up here on these other wires you run the risk of creating something called a ground loop and so I'm thinking that's why they didn't um, why they didn't do that they've only got one ground running back there and then there's grounds inside these wires but they just end up up here so anyway I meander along too much so the thing I have to remember to do is that um, when when I go to put this in, um, in here, um, let's see if we can get in a little bit closer. And I know the angle is going to be wrong because I moved it. Let's see here. Let's see. And, okay. So we've got this spring right here. And this spring goes to the underside of this against, oh. I forgot I'm really close. Where are we? I'm going to back out. Whoops, wrong. All right. All right, so the spring rides against the side of this. Now, if you put the spring down here, which I had a mistake I've made, the head won't go down far enough. It won't travel that, that piece of wire. So I've got to make sure when I put this together that the wire of that spring is up here, up in this area. It's a very, and I'm showing you this setup because it's a really, really complex setup. Like, let me see if I can, uh, oops, watch my camera. Um, all right. <laughs> okay. Let's, uh, let's aim down here um, for a minute because I'm going to show you. All right. So what you've got here is this is a detent. I'll show you where that, and that goes to the bottom of this, so that when it gets clicked forward, it locks in place and doesn't move beyond its spot. But on top of this, they have put, and this has a key in it, it's a little notch there, and there's a, a little arm here, and this fits on one way only, and. Uh, and there's a spring that goes under. I just I didn't put it on yet. So this controls the lights on the front, and uh, it also tells it. I think this has an auto reject, and also tells it when it's hit track four and it auto rejects. Um, and then the other part of all this, this is one of the headaches that caused me problems trying to get this together and trying to find some way of getting this to not be interfered with, because this is back here because it's got a ramp on the bottom here. And so this sits back here and this rides against this. And this is the adjustment for your height uh, of the tape, of the, the head relative to the tape. And here's what, here's the other part that's really interesting. This is your cap stand, I believe. Yes, it is. Um, 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 and you can't see a thing. So I'm aiming at something and Let's see here. Okay. Let's move that in a little bit. See if we can get there. And. All right. So this is, this. I've not seen, I've, I've seen a number of mechanisms for um, advancing or for changing tracks in the tracks. And this is the most complex one I've seen yet. How this thing works, just for any who might be interested in this, this sits back here. In fact, we gotta swing you this way so I can get that on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Alright, so, and you can't see a thing because my arm is in the way. Alright, so this sits here, but it sits below this piece. This is a solenoid. And the solenoid actually sits above um, these arms. Oh, I guess you can't see my hands there. So it's about, there's little pins here. Okay. There are little pins here. 
and there are pins on this. And normally, when this is spinning, it's clearing th this arm right here. So when this thing wants to change tracks, the solenoid activates, this drops down, the pin on this arm drives this arm forward, which then grabs this and spins it and spins it to the next and spins it to the next uh, so this will sit right here and when it's time to change tracks the solenoid comes down grabs this and spins it to the next track it, it detents in and then it's ready to go of course I'm trying to do it manually and it's not doing its thing so it's kind of a complex little setup and I've never seen anything quite like it and there's a definite order in which this thing goes together so this, the head has to go in first. All right, and I get you in there. Get you there. Come on. All right. Well, I guess that works, does it? And. Yes, okay. So now that's in place. I've got the arm of that spring where it belongs, I believe. Um, is it? Yeah, I think it is. <clears throat> so the next thing I've got to do is I have to remember what I'm doing here. Um, All right, yes, okay, so this, okay, I'm with it. I've had this apart three times. You'd think I'd remember. All right, so so this part goes on this shaft, and to get it in place, you have to put it down and swing it in because there's a, that slot in the back, which is really kind of nice that it's there. So you've got this. Now you get to put this on. And in order to get that to go down, you got to swing this part. You got to swing it around so it doesn't, and then that can come back. Probably didn't see that, but this arm has to swing out of the way. This has to swing past where it normally goes, so this can drop down, and then this can swing back in place. Now we put this on, the spring. Then we put this on, and I got to find the right spot for you. It's really fun when the camera. No matter, no matter where I put that camera, it's not in the right spot. Now. So now, I'm ready to put this part on. This is the circuit board that has the, the tracks on it that tell it what's going on with the lights, where it is on the tracks. So there's that. And then now, I have to find, I have to find this. I find this. And that goes there. So we get this washer that goes on top. Go. And this is the fun part. I've already had this clip take off on me across. Oh. Uh, right, fine. You try to be delicate and gentle, and things just don't cooperate. All right, no, 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 you go there, you go there, and I think, I don't think you can see squat, but hey, and you probably don't have enough light, because I don't. All right, so now, please don't go flying off when I try to clip you into place, please. All right, here we go. I'm trying to be so careful to not spit that off into space, and that was too gentle. All right, try this again. This would be my third or fourth time doing this. You would think I would have it down by now. Come on. This is the first time I've done this, but hey, you know. Come on. Uh, why are you not cooperating? It's 
because you don't want to. Let's see here. Um, there we go. Yeah, when you lose one thing, you lose all of them because there's springs under everything. There we go. There we go. And I got to just get that clip in there and stop being so delicate about it. All right. Please cooperate. No, come on. Ah, there it is. That wasn't so hard, was it? Okay, so I, th I thought I'd just show you that because it's really wild. And I'm going to just double check that's all working. And it is. It is working. Okay, good. Now, I put this tape on here because I was, as I was moving this around, it was moving the individual wires. And the individual wires were moving, especially the top two. Um, and they were um, stressing the ends, which is why it broke twice. This one broke twice, three times, and then the one down there broke once. But I discovered by putting them together, making it more sturdy, they move as a unit, they put less stress on the connections, which I probably should have done that at the beginning, but that did not occur to me until I had broken the wire at least twice. I thought, you know, there's got to be a better way. And I realized that if I tape that together, all of them take the stress together, they don't move individually, and it should work better, and it seems to have done just what I wanted. Now, so down here, down here, there's a little clip, and I believe the clip takes these wires and these wires, I think, and I'm concluding those because I really want this to stay up here and well, I guess it doesn't really matter. But there is um, You know what? I'm not going to do that. I want to I want to get tighter tension on this cuz I want this up like that and I want it tight. Um there. Okay. So let's double check this. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm going to pull this down a little bit because the circuit board is right here. I don't want that riding against that constantly. Um, I think that'll work. Um, yeah. Oh, there we are. I think we're good. All right. <clears throat> so... Oh, and I also had to replace this drive belt for the counter because uh, the one that was on there was really dead and not doing much of anything. All right, so our next step is... Now, this is so much fun. Not really. Um, I'll get back out a little bit. All right, so this has to clip in here and you've got to clear the heat sink uh, let's see here come on uh, this is so much fun trying to get that where I want it and that goes in there out of here now this little bracket is a lot of fun because that has to go under here and go into the front panel. But you've got to get this circuit board just almost all the way in before you can get this and uh, put it together. So, here we go. Come on. And the, there's, there's three little clips that slide behind each of these. So now that's in place. And you can't you can't get this in place too soon before the circuit board goes down because it's just not going to happen. <laughs> All right. Now, now, okay, there we go. 
So there we go. We've got this, we got this, and next, uh, MC9, okay. Alright, and they do have, and I didn't notice this before, you'll notice that they have a, a, a number, a letters and a number. Well, I just noticed on the circuit board that they have numbers and letters there. So, MC10. I was trying to do this from uh, pictures I had taken, which is not a bad thing to do. But I was trying to identify what went where based on the pictures I had taken, when in fact they are numbered. Ah, okay. Alright, so now, this goes next. We'll clip on the end there that slides in. And then this slides over. And, and this has red screws. Um, that allow me to go. Are you lining up? I don't know. Yes, maybe? No. Alright. Let's move this over a little bit. Try that again. Come on. Well now. That's not being very cooperative. I think it's this, is it? Hmm. Now you would think as many, with as many times as I've taken this apart, I would know. I know where this goes, and I know where this goes, for sure. And... Let's see. Let me take a closer peek at the type of threads that are in that hole and see what I've got here. Well, that looks like it's a regular fine thread. So, yeah. All right, let's see. Well, let's test this. Is this the one I want? Aha! I think. Okay. There are two different size screws. I did not remember that. Okay. Alright, let's see. Sometimes I feel like I should take notes or something or mark things somehow, but I never do. I take things apart and then afterward I'm thinking, where did this go? How did that go? What order did it go in? Um, and uh, given that I frequently don't video taking stuff apart, I'm always having to figure it out later. Come on. I know you're supposed to fit there. Come on. Please. No. No. You're not being very cooperative at all. Well. It worked better when I didn't have this in place, but unfortunately this needs to be there. Come on, let's go. Why? Alright, we're going to trade screws. I don't know why that was misbehaving, but it's not going in. I'm not going to fight with it. And maybe because I tried to do the other end first, I don't know. So. And when you're fighting with something and it's giving you grief, you can fight with it, or you can do something different. So it seems like the correct approach is to start this end first. 
and then do this end. Don't know why. Of course, I also swapped screws, so maybe that's the issue. Because I have run into situations where certain fasteners work better in certain spots than other things. Um, okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. So MC9, I'm going to get it connected up so that it will function, and then we're going to test this. Now, what happened last time? My la this was my this was my last previous attempt. Let's put it that way. And this worked. It held the head in place. It clamped the ground plate into place. But the static that I was getting whenever I tried to play an A-track was horrible. You just couldn't use it. It was just not listenable. So, uh, so I'm really, really, really hoping that uh, by getting that metal out of there, um, that I will have achieved a much quieter a track one can only hope all right so that goes there I know that so that was MC9 MC6 is there those are test points it says that goes to the rear we won't worry about that just yet uh, let's see this one says MC4 and that has to be MC8 this is MC6. MC6 is right here. Oh, and I gotta get these back where they belong before I do that. So pink goes here. Purple goes over here, otherwise known as violet. Then we got blue and white, which goes over here. Okay, and we've got MC8, which is this one. You go there. And what's really nice um, is they put a gap between a couple, two pins to make sure that your orientation is correct. So I'm glad they were thinking uh, of um, the people who would follow after who would we take this part not necessarily remember where things are supposed to be. MC6 goes over here. And see, and this one says it's MC5. Uh, MC5, that's four. Oh, there you are, over here. That's seven. Okay. Uh, ten and four. All right, so four goes over here. Ten. Ten goes. Ten goes over here. Um, yes. All right. And let's see. Now that goes there. These go here. Then afterwards, I'll figure out where the little tie wrap thingies go. But for now, that will go there. Um, so I'm missing one. MC7. Actually, I'm missing two. Um, it's one hiding underneath here. Where did you go? Uh, da -da, da -da. Well, I know I had this all back together once. So, ah, there you are. You sneak. All right, so we go there, and I think this goes over in here somehow, and then gets all clipped together. And okay, um, I'm gonna go under this just because that seems to be the way it wants to go. Those, and this will have to come down, so this all will go together. Um, actually, maybe I don't want that under, because I think everything goes above. Well, it's going to now. Of course, it doesn't really matter. Just being a little bit anal here. 
I do seem to recall that all of these were clamped together, kind of. And they all went around there like that. Alright, and so then the last one is right here, which is MC5. Yes, it is. So, if I haven't forgotten anything... Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, um, I've got other screws to put in to mount the circuit board, but I don't think it's going to matter. I don't believe. Okay, so... Oh, and I don't want this floating around because... With my luck, that will find a home on one of the top on the top of one of the circuit boards in the worst possible place, which will terminate something. I don't want to do that. It says no fun at all. Okay. So at this point, I think I've got everything on here. I need to, to actually make this run. Um, let me grab my panel. So power off. Uh, let's see, we've got speaker A and B. It's up here and that's up. Okay, good. So, I think... I think I'm ready. Do to do. Power cord. Alright. Let's do that. We have power. And... Let's check and see um, if it works. Down and out. Oh, other than the fact that it's out of adjustment, no static, nothing. He spoke right out. So I'll have to adjust the alignment, but it's fine. This is good. Um, so I'm going to tweak this, um, put some screws back in that need to be put back in. Uh, of course, that means I have to put take this off, so I can put that other screw back in. There's a definite order to this thing. So um, for safety's sake, we'll unplug you. Because in case anybody who decides that they want to start working on, on vintage electronics, and you think working on transistorized stuff, um, could be safer. Let me alert you. I mean, yeah, you're not dealing with typically, you know, 250 volts or 700 volts or whatever some of the tube stuff is. But look back here. I think I can get in there a little bit. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay. See that fin? Can you see that fin? That's just a, a very a bare pin. It's a wire wrapped connection. There's another one just like it behind here, which you cannot see. Uh, and there's others. There's others on this board. They're just little pins sticking up. They're wire wrapped. And um, you see these wires here? These are. This is the AC line. This is the on off. And this is the, AC, the external AC jacks on the back of the stereo. And your power line comes in here, comes into these guys, feeds directly over onto these wire wrap things, bare, unprotected, uh, and then the wires come off from, uh, one of the wires comes off here and goes up to the switch, and then it comes back here to this wire wrapped connection. This is all 120 volts AC sitting there. So, most of the stuff on the chassis, you know, you're probably maybe talking, depending on what you're working on, you might be talking 30 volts, you might be maybe 80 volts DC. Uh, a lot of stuff is lower than that. Um, but you've got this stuff back here. So watch your fingers. Uh, you could get yourself bit uh, and you won't like it. Um, so just be aware that even transistor stuff on this of this vintage, um, which I'm thinking this is 70s maybe. But uh, in any case, just be careful because uh, it can bite you, and that's no fun at all. All right, so 
I'll be back. Okay, there was one last thing I wanted to show you. Uh, I didn't want to forget, because this could be helpful to somebody. Um, when I got the stereo, this bulb was working, and all of a sudden it wasn't working. And I thought, well, that's fun. Where am I going to find one of those? Because uh, I may have mentioned that finding parts for this is a little tough. Well, somebody out there, thank you for your uh, insight, said, you know, um, I think this is 12 volts. Um, I think it is. Uh, some cars use this type of bulb in their dome light. Now, this is not exactly right. The, the ends are a little bit fatter than the original bulb. But these little clamps are flexible enough to allow me to slide that bulb in here. And it works perfectly. It gives me the proper kind of light on here. Um, and um, so if you have something like this, and it's got this style of clamp, and it needs this kind of bulb, Check out the uh, and check the voltage that you, you're. Uh, with, yeah, check out the voltage that the bulb is running at, and then see if you can find a similar bulb at the auto parts store. You might be you might get uh, lucky. Um, so now I've got a spare. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to throw that. And so, <clears throat> as you just heard, there's no static in my E-track. Yeah, I got two tra tracks running together. But that's okay. We'll, we can adjust that. So what I learned, and when I was building this, uh, there was a thought in the back of my mind, is this a good idea? Yeah, it probably isn't, but I don't have an option. So I'm building this anyway, and I'm going to see if this works. Now I know. Um, uh, Eight-track tape heads do not like it when you add a lot of extra metal in contact with the case of the tape head. Uh, in my case, it resulted in a huge amount of static. So, yeah, I wasted a lot, an awful lot of time building this. I felt really a great deal of satisfaction when I got all done with this. I said, look what I just made. I like that. Uh, up until the point when it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, but I learned, and I'm glad I did it, I, even though I wasted a lot of time, now I know. Uh, if I'm going to repair, try to repair something, it's got to be plastic, it's got to be non-ferrous metal, um, brass might work, um, the ground strap that they use uh, to ground that, that tape head is brass, but ferrous metal, yeah, no, that's not an option. And one of the other problems that I ran into with this was clearances. So if you're trying to do something on, on uh, an 8-track or something like that, pay close attention to the clearances around the head and, and the mechanism behind the head because um, you can run into headaches if you don't really watch where things, where you have room and where you don't have room for stuff. So anyway, so I'm I'm hoping... I'm really hoping that my um, epoxy, sitting as it is, sitting as it is in the grooves in the inside the the area where the head mounts, I'm hoping that that will be sufficient to hold the head in place. Because short of printing a new part, and I do not have the ability to do that, but short of printing a new part, there is no choice. There is no option. There are no parts for this. I went looking, and I I didn't spend a huge amount of time. But all the search results that I got involved stereos and not parts. Even though parts was part of my query, um, I, I just couldn't find any parts for this. So if you're looking for a motor, if you're looking for any part that's unique to this, I'm sad to say it's probably not going to be available to you. Um, I might poke around a little bit more just to see what's out there, but if I had to guess, I would say that the chances of you finding something are kind of in the slim to none category. Um, so, anyway, I wanted to come back to show it to tell you that. And so now I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to line the head, then we're going to come back and we're going to listen to it and see how it, uh, how it sounds. 
Okay, it's back together. It's working. Uh, I did align the head and it seems to be working exactly the way it's supposed to. Uh, this has definitely been a project. I started out just checking it out, cleaning some dirty controls. And I wound up doing a whole lot more to this than I originally planned to. However, the end result was good. Uh, way too many hours <laughs> involved in fixing this. but it, And this is uh, just a brief snippet of how this sounds. And as you know, I can't uh, leave that in there for very long. So, this has uh, the ability to eject um, tapes automatically, although it seems to be ejecting it randomly. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, <clears throat> if you put it on manual, which is where it is now, it works fine. And you have to just eject it when you're done. So, as far as I can tell, everything else works. Oh, <clears throat> I also wound up, uh, there is a control well, the record and uh, play co control. <clears throat> this was dirty. Whether people, anyone will ever record on an 8-track uh, in the future, who knows. But uh, I was seeing some oddball stuff here when I, I pushed this in. Um, <clears throat> you would think about doing something, then finally the meters would respond. So that led me to believe that the... Um, the record, play, recall, control was dirty, so I cleaned that. These weren't working right, so I cleaned them. Um, over here, uh, this, the uh, mode control, that was also dirty, so I cleaned that. No longer statics in between on rotating the, the uh, selections. I started out originally just to clean the volume control and, and some of these other controls because they were getting a little static and a little bit noisy. Now, I used, I've been using this Radio Shack cleaner for I don't know, a long time. But, um, uh, I'm starting to think that maybe I'm going to start using the Oxit more often. Because uh, there have been a few occasions where I uh, would use the uh, Radio Shack cleaner and the uh, end result was not a clean control. Uh, it was still scratching and I'd use the deoxid and the problem would go away. So uh, I know deoxid has a really good reputation. Um, like I said I've used the Radio Shack stuff exclusively for years and I haven't had a lot of trouble with that. Maybe now that I have the other option uh, of testing or comparing it to the oxide, I've discovered that maybe the oxide is better. If I didn't have that, I would have probably just hit the control again with realistic cleaner, and maybe that would have solved the problem as well. I don't know. <clears throat> but um, anyway, uh, this thing sounds pretty good. I, I found out that this thing only puts out about 12 watts per channel, <clears throat> which leads me to believe that the... Um, the uh, other realistic stereo that I repaired, which I which I thought it said on the back was 20 watts per channel, I highly doubt that's true. Uh, I think that was a mistake. I must have mid misread something, but in any event. But this thing is, is pretty good. It's got a fair amount of power. Um, decent bottom end. You know, of course, that is affected by the type of speakers you use and how good they are, but... Uh, for 12 watts per channel, this thing does really surprisingly well. And uh, the fact that it has a phono option on it is great for those who uh, might uh, have a, a turntable and want something to to uh, run the, the phono through. Uh, something like this would work out well. And I don't think you'd be too disappointed. Now, I must admit, um, I was using this for a while. For quite a while, and then I, I repaired my realistic SDA 2270, uh, and that has 65 watts per channel, and it is definitely noticeable uh, that that difference in power, or the, the quality of the sound. I mean, just it's uh, 
definitely a, a significant difference. Because I thought this sounded decent, and it actually it does. But the minute I hooked up that uh, realistic um, and ran it through the same speakers I had been driving with this, I said, oh, what a difference. So, you know, it's just difference in the power that's uh, available to you and it's a more expensive unit, I, I imagine, seeing as it's got so much more output. Um, it's a decent amp. And uh, I really am not looking for anything better than that. It certainly uh, can put uh, out enough sound if you're into hearing loss. Um, that will provide it for you. Uh, and uh, if your speakers aren't healthy, I actually had to put the... Uh, I have a couple of Optimus speakers, and uh, those were tag sale finds. And the foam surrounds had gone bad on those, and if I had cranked that, I would have had my uh, voice coil and cone sitting out Side the speaker because that's got a lot of punch. Fortunately, I started hearing the rattling and the noise before I decided to crank it a bit, and uh, I avoided that um, mishap. So, anyway, I ramble on here. Um, finally, though, this thing is done. I'm going to call this a wrap. So, if you've watched to this point, thank you, and uh, catch you later in the next video.